I don't know about you. One thing I've learned along the way is most people can talk a good story. Matter of fact, some people can tell a good story. Some people can walk, maybe, and have a good walk, you know, and when they talk, you know, they're, they're talking, their walk sounds good, even looks good at times. But, you know, I'm kind of like one of those types of people that likes to look and see what happens when the person kind of stumbles. You know, what'd the guy do when he fumbled the ball? What's it look like when you kind of mess up, you know, and kind of like screw up, you know, kind of make a mistake? What do you do about it then? Do you just kind of like lose it? Abuse it? What kind of person is it, you know, that really knows how to fail in order to succeed? I don't know about you, but that's the kind of person that I'm interested in. You see, I know what it's like to have a good story. I know what it's like to tell a good story. As a matter of fact, I know what it's like to make up a good story. And sometimes you hear that, like in pulpits or in churches or kind of like on the internet. You know, you hear all these cute stories, you know, things that people have made up, these cliches, you know. And they'll tell you about, you know, well, you know the person you were bullying, you know, well, they grew up to be... They'll tell you about some other silly story that they make up to make it sound good. You know, to kind of like tickle your ear or to tug at your heart. You know, they'll put some picture out there and say, Oh, look at this picture. Oh, poor people. Do we want you to give us money so that we can pay for these people? Well, you know, I, I like it. I'll, I'll throw out a few bucks, you know, or throw a few dollars here or there or wherever. You know, because we like to be provoked, don't we? You know, we like to kind of like feel the guilt, don't we? We kind of like to hear the story before we decide if it's a story or not. Sometimes we just go ahead and buy the story whether we believe it or not. And I think that's kind of like maybe not the best way to go. Because you see, God wants you to know that he is the rest of the story. I like to think that if I ask, I receive. If I knock, you know, I expect the door to be open. If I'm looking, I expect to be able to find. Now, I don't know about you, but when Jesus said that, I thought, wow, that makes common sense, common sense. As a matter of fact, don't you know, get me wrong, but most spiritual sense that I see Jesus talking about, on the other hand, makes perfect sense. Call it weird, but you know, I kind of see it as common sense, everyday living to me. Maybe, you know, you need more spiritual and kind of like all these stories, you know, and kind of these walks and talks and making up things in order to really get your attention. You know, like sensationalize it, make it bigger than it is. You know, invent miracles or make it more of a story. Ooh, let's embellish it some. Let's make it like the 99%, you know, and then we'll say, oh, well, the poor 1%. You know, never mind that we don't know a hundred people like that, but hey, you know, we're going to say it's the 99%. After all, everybody knows if it's on the internet, it's true. Right. Now, I, I'm a little different, you know. I, I, I got some street savvies, you know. I've been, I've been up the creek and, you know, up, up the creek, up the mountain, down the hills, you know, around the road, you know, around the bend, you know. I kind of know some of my neighbors, don't know some of them. You know, I'm kind of like, you know, Shuffling and jiving at times. You know, sometimes I have to run for my life. You know, sometimes I have to duck. Ooh, somebody shot somebody. Ooh, wow. Because you see, that's the reality of life itself. I don't like to talk in the, you know, vague generalities. You know, I like to talk where the rubber meets the road. When somebody tells me about getting in my face, I know what they mean. And that's kind of what Jesus said. When somebody gets in your face, hey, go ahead, let them. You know, let them get in your face, and if they want some, give it to them. You know, that's what it meant by turning the other cheek and kind of like doing these things. You know, it's like, is it really that important? And that's kind of what I get a handle on. You know, what's really important to me? Is it more important to, you know, kind of like tell people what to do or live the way I want them to do? You know, I kind of think that maybe living it is more than giving it. 
you know, living it out the way that we talk about. Because everybody has a story. I mean, quite frankly, as soon as I find out their story, I kind of go, oh, wow. That's different. Maybe that makes sense. I, I understand where you're coming from now. Maybe I could change my story in order to incorporate your story and, you know, kind of like understand you a little better. Because once I've got the rest of the story, I kind of get a handle on what's going on in your life. And that's kind of what God said when he said, you know, like, hey, you know, man looks on the outward things, but God looks on the heart. I mean, you know, after all, I can look at, you know, you. Yeah, you. And say, ew. Ew. Get back, Jack. I don't want you. <laughs> Because I'm looking at the outward things. But you know, <coughs> one of the things I discovered, almost every time that I see someone that I think, yeah, they turned out to be more like, yeah. You know, kind of loving kind of person. Now that's kind of weird. Almost every time they turned out to be one of those Kind of loving purpose. I kind of think that God was kind of being sneaky, you know. He was kind of like, you know, doing one of those dump and chump things, you know, that he was dumping some teaching on me in order to see if I was chumping it, you know. In other words, I was going to be a chump about it, you know. Learn it or lose it, you know. I mean, it's kind of like, you know, you get these lessons in life, you know, that God brings along. You know, he kind of wants to tell you something. So he says, okay, tell you what I'm going to do. You get to pick on uh, door number one. This is what you see. On door number two, I'm not telling you. On door number three, you get to guess what it might be. I uh, well, let me, let me see. What's what, what more can I see at door number one? It's a car. Oh man, <laughs> give me the car. Oh, but behind the car is the debt. <laughs> oh, you mean I gotta pay taxes? Yeah. But door number two, you open it up and you go, oh, wow, it's a cruise. Snooze, you lose. So, a lot of times, you know, God brings these things along, but, you know, you, you, you kind of look like it, you know, it looks really good. It's kind of like winning the lottery, you know. Whoa, now I can go for winning the lottery, or can I? Well, you know, you, you read these stories, you know, again, there's those stories again. You know, what's the true story? You know, you hear about the lottery guy, he quit his job, you know, he decides, oh, I'm going to do all this with my money. Then later on down the road, about, you know, two or three years, you know, you kind of look at him and you go, what happened to the guy that won the lottery? He's broke, but he had income for life. He's in debt. What happened? I mean, he's, he's like, you know, like, worse off than he was better off and he won the lottery? Stupid. Or is it? You see, I don't know what's best for me. I do know one thing, that when I've had things, uh... Some things just weren't the best for me. There's some things on the one hand that I go, ooh, gimme, gimme, gimme. I want it. Sometimes I just go, oh, I'll eat it. You know, I'll stick a lot of things in my mouth, you know, and little do I realize, oh man, my stomach hurts. <laughs> I feel like a two year old, you know, just stick it in my mouth and I'll eat it. You know, well, yeah. <laughs> and if you don't take some Pepto Bismol once in a while or some pumps, you ate it. You get it. <laughs> you know? Kind of like indigestion. It looked good. Smelled good. It tasted good, but... Tooey. Man, by the time it kind of churned around and, you know, I kind of digested it, it wasn't so good for me. There's a lot of things in life that are like that. I'm beginning to discover that myself, you know, that even on the street, you know, a lot of things look good, you know, like, you know, some of these things, you know, you know, I know they're illegal, but, you know, they look good. They make me feel good. They taste good, but you know, down the road, they ain't so good. Kaboom. You know, some people die from them. Hey, that's living on the streets, you know. That's what's going to happen. So, you know, I, I like to talk to someone who really knows the rest of the story, who's kind of like been there, done that, you know, kind of said, hey, I tried it. I didn't like it. And, you know, that's why I appreciate when somebody's honest, you know, when somebody's truthful. You know, I can make up my own stories. You know, I don't need somebody to tell me some kind of fancy, dancy, you know, kind of song and dance routine about, you know, hey, I'm going to talk spiritual at you so that, you know, you can 
go, ooh, ah, let's sing and worship. Ooh, I'm all cleaned up. You know, and the truth is, I didn't take a bath this morning. And something stinks. Fury. Yuck. And that's kind of what happens sometimes when you, you, you meet people. You know, you kind of go, well, you know, they look like they got it all together. They act like they got it all together. And then all of a sudden, something comes along and just goes, smacks them in the face and you go, I don't think they got it all together. That's why when you're dealing with something like God, first of all, God is this idea or this image, you know, this big guy, you know, or big man or, you know, some kind of image of something that's huge and big and giant and made everything. I mean, you know, that's what we're told, isn't it? You know, I mean, I'm kind of like, you know, he's big, he the universe in his hand, you know. Hand, universe, big, big. Okay, if he's that big, what's he care about me? Well, then we hear about, you know, Jesus and all this stuff, you know, come down, do this, that, and the other thing, go, woo, 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 woo. Okay, maybe he does care about me. You know, he died for me. Funny, it don't look like he's doing it today, but, you know, hey, what can I say? You know, like, oh, try it, you like it. So, you know, you give it a shot, you know, and if it works, it works, you know, and for me, hey, it works. I like those kind of people that you go, I am telling you what to do, but I've never done it, but I, you know, I'll tell you about it. Yeah. Don't do drugs, but I've never done drugs, so I'm going to tell you not to do drugs. Shut up, dude. You ain't been there. Don't tell me. I don't care. You know, you, you, know, you don't have to try them in order to you know, teach it, but you know, don't preach it if you haven't lived it, you know, because guess what? You haven't got a clue, man. Sin is good, and I like it, and I'm going to dive in it. Well, it's true. It is good. Woohoo! Pop the pill, man, you'll feel good. Wow! At least for a little while, won't you? But then you crash, don't you? Don't you? I mean, let's be real. You've seen people drop dead on the street. You know, they OD, they und, you know, they did do, they didn't do. Or like, you know, the guy who says, you know, hey, I'm just puffing, you know, I'm just going to smoke. I'm just doing my joint, you know, I'm just toking it, toking it and smoking it, you know. And sure enough, you know, the guy, hey, man, check it out. The house is on fire. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll get out of here in a minute, you know. Let me just kind of like, one more. Yeah, man, you know, don't stress it. Don't worry, man. I'll pay the bills, you know, the bills will get there. You know, I'm getting there. I'm cool. You know, chilling it. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll get there. We'll take care of it. You know, but by the way, can, can, can I get a little more weed? Can I get a little more stuff? You know, can I roll this up? You know, can I make me one of those? You know? This is live. No, it's not. Sorry. People around you are going, stupid. Stupid is what stupid does. He's stupid. Sorry. You know, there's more to life than stupid. You know, there's more to life than these stories people tell Matter of fact, I found out that there's more to life than death. You know, what? Really? More to life than death? I mean, what are you talking about? Well, you see, people talk a good story until suddenly they're smacked with death. You know, and then they go, oh, Well, I believe in eternal life, but not as soon as I'm told I got cancer. Then I'm scared. Oh, no! Or, you know, hey, my son died. Huh? Yeah, I believe in eternal life. Now I'm all shook up. Where's your pain? Well, you know, tell a good story. Now, I'm out here on the streets talking street language because I've been there. You know, I mean, I, I, dude, you know, I, I, I've been where you're talking, you know, like the backpack, you know, and you're out there, you're heading down the road, you're hitching. You know, hey, I've been to hitching. You know, I know how dangerous it is. You know, I've had like perverts pick me up and try to, you know, Rape me? Rape me? No! Oh, no, Mr. Bill, help! And Mr. Bill died, but you know, guess what? God came through and protected him. You mean you didn't exercise your right to bear arms, you know, and go out and shoot that guy? Nah. You mean you didn't, like, you know, call down angels and have them consumed by fire? Nah. Those are nice stories, you know, and I believe that they happen, even to this day. But, you know, the way I lived, it was that God delivered. You know, and he said, Lord, help me. I don't know what to do. I've got a problem. You know, and God took care of me. Well, 
and I'm still here. Intact. Wow, imagine that. And that's kind of what you got to do when it comes to, you know, like living it on the streets. You know, when you're talking about God, either he's big enough, either he's smart enough, either he's wise enough, or forget it. It ain't God. It's just your own story, you know, because you can make up a good story. But you know what? People are going to see through the story as soon as you start living life. As soon as you start binding yourself in those predicaments where you don't have the answer, where you can't figure out what to do next, where you're sitting there going, uh, oops, I think I went left when I should have gone right. Now that I've gone left, now what do I do? You see, everyone can say things like, oh, well, it's cool as long as I'm sitting here in my pew because, you know, I know what to do. Open the hymnals, you know, and go, ooh, cool, or open your Bible too, and you go, oh, yeah, or, you know, sing a song, and you go, oh, okay. And so when things are going right, you say, yeah, I'm a Christian. Of course I am. But what about when things are going wrong? I mean, what about when things are going stomping and chomping and beating and sneaking? You know, I mean, where it's kind of like, you know, you're getting hit from the left, the right, the uppercut, the downcut, you know, and you're going, is this the way a Christianity lives? You know, or is this the way those Christians live? Yeah, I didn't know that I was in store for all of this. I think I want to check out before, you know, I check in because guess what? If I check out what's going to happen, I don't know if I want to check in. See, I think maybe I want to lie, you know. I'm not one of them. Oh, uh -uh, man, you know, I, I was told it was like, you know, the rest of the story, you know, the happy stuff. You know, I, I like the goodies, but I don't want the baddies. You know, just give me the good and I don't want the bad. Oh, God said all of it? What if I don't want what if I don't want to be a Christian because, you know what, I don't want to suffer. I don't want to go through all this other junk. I don't want any junk in my trunk. I want the happy, so let me go find some other church and make me feel happy. You know, I want to feel good. I want to, hey, dude, I want to look good. Check it, man. I want to strut my stuff. I want to be what you see, you know, I'm kind of cool, you know, I know what I'm doing, you know, I'm smooth, I'm silk, you know, I'm living it, hey, it's the life, man, you know, you just gotta have money, 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 you know, it sounds good, it looks good, it feels good, I you got a little problem. What happens when the money's gone, honey? <laughs> Oops. No money? Bye. Ah. So it only looks good as long as you're living it with it. But once it's gone, oh my God. When your faith is gone, when your help is gone, when your hope is gone, when everything else is gone, is God gone? Endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. I have given him, you, for witness to the people, a leader and commander to the people. It became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. Whoa, jump back, Jack. What did you say? Huh? Uh-uh. I won't be perfect. Because I am perfect. I just name it, man. I am. I got it because I said it and I do it because I live it and I am. So I'm perfect. It became him, Jesus, for whom are all things and by him are all things. In bringing many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. Are you sure that's in the Bible? I don't remember the gospel being like, you know, I thought the gospel was like, you know, God's going to give me an abundant life. We must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. What? I'm more than conqueror, man. I get it. I got it. I'm going to live it. I'm going to do it because you know what? I'm going to always look good. I'm going to always be good. I'm going to always, you know, dress up, act up, you know, be that kind of shiny kind of, you know, art up. You mean I'm going to sometimes blow it? 
in order to know it? Are you kidding me? You mean to tell me that this whole Christianity thing is, you know, I, 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 I still got to kind of work it? You know, I still kind of like do something about it? You mean I don't just get it and I just go, woohoo, it's heaven, baby, and I'm on my way? You mean you know, it's going to get tough? You mean it's going to get rough? You mean I'm going to have to actually trust somebody to do something for me? I got my own way of doing it. I got my own way of living. Hey, I got my own security, you know. Cool, isn't it? Pretty tough, man. I mean, bad. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, you betcha, man. I can, like, you know, drop and stop, you know, just about, you know, 10 guys in their tracks. Maybe 50 because I got my Uzi, too. <laughs> Guess what? <laughs> yeah, I can do that, too. You ever tried somebody doing that? Guess what? They can't shoot straight because it goes all over the place. <laughs> Try holding something steady, you know, when it's going like that. It's like, they hit everywhere except the bullseye. <laughs> You can see it. Watch, just watch some TV show where they got some kind of like goofy gun. You know, they're holding a gun. And it's like, <sighs> then they put two hands on it. <sighs> kind of like you know when you're standing there, you know, and you're trying to shoot a shotgun. You ever see somebody that stands 50 feet away or 100 feet away outside of the shotgun blast? Just outside of the range of shotgun blast, guess what it does? It goes choo, sideways. So you could stand right in the middle, just a little farther down the way, it'll miss you. Somehow these things don't work, do they? Not as good as you think they do. We wrestled not against flesh and blood. What? You mean, you mean, what do you mean? But against principalities, against powers, and against the rulers of darkness of this world. And against spiritual wickedness in high places. You mean my gun isn't going to shoot some spiritual thing? Don't I got spiritual bullets? Hey. Dude, I got my gun. <laughs> it doesn't work that way? Man, I was growing up with cowboys and Indians. I thought, man, you know, I could just, like, take them out. What's that all about, this spiritual stuff? I mean, are you telling me they're ghosts? We got to call Ghostbusters or something? You know, we got to kind of like, you know, go fucker. Hmm. I don't know if I'm liking this Christianity stuff so much. It's getting a little confusing. I thought I could do it in my own strength. You mean I got to have someone else help me to do it? Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God. I like that part. Got any guns with it? We do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. The God of all grace. Grace? 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 Ew, sounds wimpy. Who has called us unto his eternal glory by Jesus. After that you have suffered a while, make you perfect, Establish you, strengthen you, and settle you. I'm not sure I like that message. I'm not sure I want to do that. I'm not so sure about this God thing. It's like, hey, when I'm saying, when I'm the CEO and CFO, you know, and it's, it's like, you know, dude, I'm in charge. Then I understand. Hey, I can understand my own way of looking. I can understand my own way of doing. Matter of fact, I can figure it out on my own self. Do you know? Get God involved? You said he's bigger than me, right? You said he's smarter than me, right? You said he created everything, right? Well, you know what I mean? He made everything. He created everything. He knows everything. He does everything. One plus one is two. Two plus two is four. Four plus four is eight. Eight plus eight is sixteen. Thirty-two. So 
So, 1663. You mean like, a, seeing how he's got, you know, like, all the smarts. Seeing how he's got all the power. Seeing he's got all the glory. You think maybe I ought to kind of like do it his way? Maybe. Maybe not. Maybe you want to stick it, you know, and chill it till you figure it out. Okay. You want to be stupid. Stupid is as stupid does, you know. Go check it out, you know, and spend the time. Running about, you know, kind of looking like a chicken with its head cut off. Whoa! Have you ever seen one of those? Not pretty. Man, as a matter of fact, it's spilling its guts all over the place, so to speak. Kind of like blood everywhere, and that chicken feet, you know, isn't moving, but you know what? That body's still running. This God thing, you know, God is, like, made everything. God is God. I'm not. Huh. Maybe I better think about this for a while. Maybe I better deal with, you know, the reality of, uh, you know, like uh, somebody come knocking on my door, you know, and like I hear the knock. And you know what? My P.O. showed up. Uh, well, no, somebody got P.O., but it's not my P.O. <laughs> Sorry, wrong day of the week. He doesn't come until Father's Day, you know. I haven't been paying my alimony, so hey, yo. Oh, wait a minute, I don't have kids. <laughs> oh, I haven't gone down that road yet. Oh, but have I heard the story? Yes, I don't have to have experienced everything. I guess I don't really have to go to hell to know that there's a hell. Or do I? I don't think I want to check that one out first. Matter of fact, you know, I think maybe I might check out this this whole idea about if God made everything, you know, and He saw that it was good, and now we look at everything, and we go, well, it's not so good. Maybe I need to figure out what God's talking about about this thing, you know, Christianity and, you know, kind of walking with him and talking with him and living with him and doing it, you know, so that I'm not just talking a story, so that I'm not just trying to, like, trying to make up something, so that I'm not just trying to, like, you know, bamboozle or schnoozle you, you know, that, you know, I can confusal you, you know, so that you just buy into what I'm saying. Maybe I ought to talk about what I know. Oh, yeah. That's why I do what I do. And that's why you need to do what you do. Because, no offense, but you've been making a lot of doo-doo for a long time now. Isn't it about time you started using that doo-doo for something other than you living in it? Isn't it time to clean up your mess, you know, and get on with the rest? You know, kind of live like the rest of us, you know, that know God, that live with God, that talk to God, that walk with God. You know, I think that's what Jesus said, was that, I come so that you would know that the Father loves you and that you would have fellowship with him and our fellowship is with each other. So that we could know each other, so we could like live, you know, in the same camp. We could like be, you know, like, hey, this is my crew, you know, the Christians. This is my my homeboys, you know, in the church. These are my my people, man. You know, hey, they're with me. And the funny thing is, that's what God said. Didn't he? For all of us to do. 